to begin to connect to that resource called the quantum field and create from the field instead of from matter, there's a lot of unlearning that has to go on. You have to really begin to mentally rehearse. Mm. Like, so you ask yourself at the end of your day, I do this every day. How'd I do? How'd I do today, bro? How'd you do? Did you do good? Where'd you fall from grace? What, what, what was it that caused you to go unconscious f- for the rest of the day? Like, mm. what was that moment? Now, if you're a student of life, you'll begin to contemplate, well, it was that person that said that thing, then I reacted, or this I got this email, or things didn't go my way, and I started feeling angry or frustrated or fearful. The next time that happens, how could I evolve my experience? Now, you may have to search for some answers mm. of the best model to build, or you may actually have a long contemplation and start to go, God, the next time that happens, I think I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that or I'm going to plan my behaviors. And the act of closing your eyes and rehearsing what you're going to do begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you already did it. Mm-hmm. Now the brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. And if you keep installing that hardware, the hardware will become a software program, which means you'll just start acting like a happy person. Why? There's no magic there. You installed the circuitry. So that's more important than the news. Right. It's more important than answering any email or any text. It's more important than talking about your past or some dinner. If you can begin to just think about how you're going to do it differently, that's the building process neurologically already. So now you have to get conscious in order to do that. And it takes some time. It means you got to shut your cell phone off. You got to close your door. You got to take a break from everything out there and begin to practice. And so by experience, then you start noticing, oh, here it comes. Here comes the frustration. Or here comes the fear. And now we've given people the tools to be able to self-regulate, yes. to create brain and heart coherence. And so you see people say, excuse me one minute, I just gonna need a minute. They take some breaths, they get back in, they connect to the energy of their future. This is incidental compared to where they're going. So they don't fall from grace. They don't allow their energy to drop. And so, yeah, in the beginning, it takes a lot because yeah. it takes a lot of energy and awareness to stay conscious and not go unconscious. But if you're persistent and you're determined and you're sincere, You begin to figure it out. You begin to say, I am not going to give my power away to that person or that circumstance when I can use it to heal or to create a new future. And so people then won't excuse themselves and say, I had a hard day yesterday, I had a fight with my coworker or my ex, and I don't feel like doing the work. Well, that's the time to get back on the horse. Yeah. Because it's the... It's all of those times that we self-correct. Mm. Those are the most valuable moments to us. People who've had profoundly transcendental experiences where they, we say, got lit up, they connected, and their brain goes into very, very high coherent states and super gamma patterns that are way outside of normal, and they have a transcendental download or connection that's mystical. They look back at their entire life They don't want to change one thing in their past because it got them to that moment. Mm. That's the moment the past no longer exists. Now, by the same means, they look back at their past and they see all those tough moments where they overcame themselves and they fall in love with that person. They don't look at the good meditations or the things that went well. They look, they know that it was those moments that got them to this moment. And I, I think then that's when they begin to understand that that all of the hard work, all the effort in who we become makes, uh, no one can take that away from us. So then once we arrive at that level and we experience whatever the dream is or whatever we create, the next thing is is do it until you fully enjoy it. And then when it gets boring or predictable, let's go again. Let's do something else. (laughs) And I think that's evolution. How bad does it have to get? I mean, to what denominator to what lowest level do you have to reach 
before people really make up their mind to change. My message is, why wait? I mean, yeah. when you're feeling so altered emotionally, you feel so bad, that's the moment you could actually see yourself for the first time because you're you're not you're answering your cell phone. You're not responding to all your texts. You're not watching TV. You're not going out to dinners. You're not calling people back. You're Something's altered in you, and you're starting to become self-aware, right? So then people wait to that lowest moment where they can start to see themselves through the eyes of somebody else. Well, if you're waking up every day and you're combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion and you're changing your emotional state to be elevated, you could still see the old self from an elevated point of view and be stay conscious than from a limited point of view. And that's what I want for people. Like, let's go. I mean, what do you got to learn? People are going to start wondering, like, did you change your medication? <laughs> What's up with that guy? Something's different about him. You're not predictable any longer, right? Yeah. And we say to our, our, our community, you know, when you're changing, you just stop talking about it. Yeah. You're just too busy being it. Something's happening, you know, and that's the repetition of getting a few days in a row of that really well. I always say, God, if you had a great meditation, you wake up feeling better at the end of that meditation than when you started. And you do that the next day, and then the next day, you're going to start feeling better all the time. And that your body's going to start feeling better, and everything's going to start feeling better. And you're going to start feeling better about life. So then, we have a thousand reasons. I have more than a thousand reasons every day to be unhappy with managing companies and staff and people, all that. But, but then, when you rise above that, and you choose just who you want to be, uh, I think it makes a big impression uh, on your on your family first yourself and your family and your friends and the people you work with and then finally the, our community so I think that people are starting to figure that out there and and when they imagine the oxytocin levels in our student body the love hormone the love chemical 200 times outside of normal the latest research on oxytocin a slight slight elevation on oxytocin it's impossible to hold a grudge now so then but what that means is you feel so amazing that why would you want to hold a grudge against that person? So forgiveness then is not something that you have to try to do to be spiritual. It's the side effect of saying, I don't want to give up this feeling for you or anybody, so I'm letting it go. I'm free in you. I'm free in myself. And my goodness, there's more liberation of energy. I call that the natural state of being. And we're knocking on that door. Why? Because as you begin to open your heart to life again, and you start trusting in your future and trusting in yourself a little bit more, and you start self-regulating with your heart, 
you do that properly and you lead from that place, from that level of awareness, your life will change in dramatic ways. Is that essential? Because when people start doing that effectively, oxytocin signals nitric oxide. Nitric oxide signals a chemical called endothelial derived relaxing factor. And that causes the arteries in your heart and lungs, Jay, to literally swell. Just like when you're when your sexual organs are aroused and blood flow moves into them, male and female, that's a different consciousness. There's a different energy in there. Imagine the same intensity moving into your heart. That's what people are experiencing. That is a level of love. It's not like a love for your puppy. It's not like the love for your partner. This is transcendent of that. This is the most familiar, unfamiliar feeling you will ever have. It'll be distant and at the same time very close. And you'll start to see the hidden meaning behind all things. And now, when you walk in the presence of your greatest betrayer, the person who threw you under the bus, whatever it is, when you walk in from this place, there will be no emotional reaction. You will just see that person for who they are, who you used to be. Now, compassion then is no longer something that you have to try to do. It's the end product of doing the work. And, and I think that mystics and saints and uh, masters of, of old understood this. So when they thought of that person, they didn't allow that thought to produce a feeling or an energy that would lower their energy. They understood that when they had the thought of that person, they saw their limitation. It wasn't hurting them. It was only hurting themselves. Now, I think that if the world was doing that, wow, we'd have a very different world. I hope you enjoyed this amazing interview with Joe Dispenza. We're continuing with our daily practice of completing the inspiring quotes. You need to complete the quote with the words that are missing, and if you can do it first and give us the right answer, you're the daily winner. In the previous video we were looking for two words of Joe Dispenza's quote. The quote goes like this. The hormones of stress, in the long term, push the genetic buttons that... The correct answer is create disease. So the hormones of stress, in the long term, push the genetic buttons that create disease. Congratulations to everyone with the right answer and to everyone who tried but didn't guess the answer. Today's quote is from Joe Dispenza also. We are looking for two words and the quote goes like this. Turn your brain from a record of the past into a map of... Write your answers in the comments below the video and tell me if you love this video and our way of ending the videos. If you like this video give your thumbs up and share it with your friends. Help me make this video more popular by sharing it. Even if you're not sure what the right answer is, try and guess. The first one with the correct answer is the winner. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button and don't miss any of new videos and new challenges. If you really like what we do here and want to support us, you can join our channel and our community for a symbolic fee and gain many other additional features. You can do that by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. Or you can click on the link in the description of this video. Stay good and have a great day.